So you're sick of how everything is a bit crap and you want to hide away in a make-believe virtual reality world where you can be a badass bounty hunter or a super suave spy or a something else alliterative? Well, no worries, as long as you've already spunked about half a grand on this shiny white helmet here. Because the MetaQuest 3 offers all kinds of thrilling VR games and experiences that'll distract you from general everyday cackness. Now here's my pick of the very best single player MetaQuest 3 games in 2024. So I, you don't even need to have any mates. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, if you want a game that is pure spectacle to really show off what the MetaQuest 3 is capable of, well, Asgard's Wrath 2 is one of the shiniest, spangliest titles out there. Packed to the armpits with gorgeous 90Hz visuals, cinematic quality audio and some spectacular levels. And don't worry if you never played Asgard's Wrath 1, which I'm guessing is the case for most people, myself included. Despite a hefty amount of exposition, the story is really just your typical stroll from A to B, bashing in the faces of everyone who gets in your way type affair. And bashing in faces is rather fun, if inevitably slightly repetitive. Just make sure you've got plenty of arm swinging space in your chosen room so you don't end up sticking your fist through a window or punching out your gran. Thankfully, there's also the occasional oversized boss to conquer, as well as simple puzzles to solve some of which involves switching between godly and human forms. And of course there's usual crafting type shenanigans, collectibles, upgrades, etc, etc to keep that gameplay from getting stale. Now while most VR adventures tend to end before the hour count hits double digits, Asgard's Wrath serves up dozens of hours of gameplay which can be extended by exploring every nook and cranny of the world and indulging in a few little side quests. And while admittedly there's not a huge amount to see once you stray from the main path, the game does occasionally throw fresh elements at you to kind of mix things up a bit, keep you interested. Now another sizable adventure that makes the most of the MetaQuest 3 is Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. And this isn't just a VR conversion of an existing Assassin's Creed title, it's an all new original escapade that will have fans of the series absolutely destroying their kecks in utter delight. You get to step into the blood-soaked shoes of some classic murdery folk from the AC universe, including Ezio and Cassandra, jumping between the different characters and time periods as the game progresses to keep things feeling fresh. Each town feels impressively grand and well populated for a VR title. These locations obviously aren't anywhere near as big as their console counterparts, but they're still a satisfying playground for your runny, jumpy, stabby exploits. As usual, you'll be scaling structures, stealthily infiltrating compounds and occasionally fighting off angry guards when it all goes a bit pear-shaped. Parkouring your way across rooftops involves just aiming your head and pressing A, so it's super intuitive, while combat is just as easy to master. And sure, Assassin's Creed Nexus VR can be a wee bit janky at times, just like any of these ambitious VR titles. Occasionally, for instance, you'll be climbing a ladder and one of your legs will get stuck in between two rungs. But the game runs pretty well on MetaQuest 3, occasional little frame drops here and there, but nothing too bad. So as long as you don't mind those standard long cutscenes that you get in all Assassin's Creed games, it's definitely well worth checking out. Now one of my biggest surprises on the MetaQuest 3 so far is The Seventh Guest, a VR reboot of that cheesy FMV 90s adventure. I was expecting a simple retread with the same clunky puzzles dusted off and chucked about a carnival style spook house. But what we actually got was a loving homage that felt both familiar and also very fresh. What the devs did was take the original deeply flawed title and actually made it fun to play. So now you've got a variety of interesting and generally well integrated brain ticklers filling each room of Stauff's mansion. Yeah, you'll still stumble across the obligatory chess puzzle and a rather tiresome spider maze that I really could have done without. But Seventh Guest on the MetaQuest 3 feels like a whole new game complete with some brilliantly implemented FMV cutscenes and a clever wee time manipulating lantern. If you fancy a more cerebral experience, complete with a healthy side serving of cheese, you really can't go wrong. The seventh guest isn't actually that scary, truth be told, especially if you've already checked out proper horror games like Exorcist Legion VR. Trust me, that one will empty your bowels faster than a laxative sandwich. Definitely pick it up if you enjoy shrieking like a startled goat. And another title that'll have you doing the John Wayne shuffle of shame to the bathroom is Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. This melancholic post-apocalyptic tale is a first-person survival horror that's almost as terrifying as real life. 
Your mission is to hunt down a legendary bunker filled with the ultimate treasure. As much pot noodle as you can fork into your face. You'll be scrabbling around for clues to the location as well as scavenging for resources to stay alive. All while dodging or double killing any brain goblin undead gits. Though stealth mechanics are surprisingly solid and taking down zombies with nothing more than a short rusty blade never gets old. Of course you can't just poke that old shiv into their head with a pathetic jab. You need to properly swing it right into their skull to penetrate deep into that crumbly brain and put their lights out for good. Otherwise you'll just piss them off a bit. It's suitably grewy and proper bloody amazing. And good news if you like Saints and Sinners because part 2 Retribution is available now to keep the gore flowing. It's basically more of the same but even more badass. The fresh new terrifying night raids reward you with big loot payoffs providing you actually survive the crowds of knocked off nocturnal brain covetors. But thankfully you can kit yourself out with Retribution's upgraded arsenal, chopping down hordes of flesh gobblers with a massive chainsaw or blasting them to bits with a sawn off shotgun. Yes bloody please. Oh and you'll also face off against a resident evil nemesis style big scary dude so it'll definitely keep that spare pair of pants on standby. And if that's not enough corpse mangling fun to keep you satisfied, well, Arizona Sunshine 2 is another fresh Meta Quest 3 title that is well worth slapping this shiny white helmet on for. This schlocky sequel takes the addictive gunplay from the first game and adds in one of the greatest virtual reality game companions of all time, Buddy, who's a very, very good dog indeed. Not only does he fetch you useful items, saving you from bending over and snatching them up yourself, but he can even tear the ghoulies off of shuffling zombie types before they get a chance to munch on your very own soft tissue. But you won't actually want him to deal with all of those brain munchers because, as with the first game, pulling off immaculate headshots is just as hilariously satisfying as ever. Exploring Arizona Sunshine's dilapidated buildings and landscapes is rarely dull, with some standout set pieces scattered throughout to boost the old adrenaline. Besides the occasional inevitable jank and a lack of a proper inventory and a few other little qualms, it's hard to find much to really mourn at here. It's another corpse cap and classic. And I've also got a big up Zombieland Headshot Fever, which is a pretty fun wave shooter based off of those Woody Harrelson flicks. The simple yet frantic gameplay is a good way to burn off some of that stress from dealing with other human folk all day long, especially if you pretend that the shuffling brain slurpers are your bumbling work colleagues. Take that, Kevin, you decomposing cockwomble. If you'd rather shoot Nazis in the face rather than zombies, well, check out Medal of Honor Above and Beyond. This tosses you onto the front line in World War II, and as you dodge in explosions on battlefields, infiltrate in enemy HQs, commandeer in tanks, and hurtling down snowy mountains, with an overall Nazi body count that puts inglorious bastards to shame. Above and Beyond is one of the most cinematic games on the meta quest, throwing some majestic and memorable set pieces at you, with plenty of satisfying gunplay and some suspenseful stealthy moments too. If you have friends, there is a multiplayer mode to indulge in, but it's the single player campaign that I really loved. It's particularly beefy, throwing hours of good Nazi blast and fun at you. And though admittedly a significant chunk is taken up with lengthy cutscenes and chatty bits to dump info and break up that action. Still, this Medal of Honor VR experience is one of the most engrossing and enjoyable MetaQuest 3 titles. Now, if for some weird reason I had a quid every time that Resident Evil 4 was released on a new console, well, I'd be able to quit this YouTube bollocks and go live in a country that wasn't perpetually dark and miserable. But the MetaQuest port is well worth a squint, even if you've completed Resi 4 many times before as it puts you right in the beefcake body of Leon S. Kennedy as he shoots angry Europeans in the face over and over and over again. From that opening assault on the village to the Kakyapans Barney with a giant lake gribbly, Resident Evil 4 is still one of the most entertaining games ever designed. In first person, that combat feels more fluid as well as more personal, and thankfully I didn't feel too motion sick despite dodging all over the place avoiding flying axes and chainsaw dickheads. It is kind of a shame though that whenever a cutscene or a cutaway plays you are whipped out of Leon's body and you just see it as a basic 2D movie from a different perspective, kind of rips you out of the immersion. But minor gripes aside, this VR port works really well. Get it in ya. Now if you fancy a more light-hearted but still rather ruddy tense VR experience, well definitely check out the I Expect You To Die trilogy. This tongue-in-cheek adventure slaps you in the sexy tux of a secret agent and thrusts you into various perilous far-fetched situations. You'll need all of your wits to solve the many puzzles and escape each scenario unharmed. 
so definitely don't go down in too many martinis first. With its tongue-in-cheek humour, clever mind twisters and impressive interactivity, I Expect You To Die is an absolute delight, albeit one with limited replayability. Good thing that there's three of them then, and I swear they either get harder with each release or I'm just getting stupider. And yeah, please don't speculate in the comments which one it is. For a proper action-packed MetaQuest 3 game, well, check out Runner, a shooty bike and extravaganza that was clearly more than a little bit inspired by the awesome Akira anime. It's not subtle, but it is stylish and you won't be bored by a single second, taking down seemingly endless swarms of buddies while trying your best not to smash into the many obstacles that pop up in your path. Not gonna lie though, Runner may well wear you down a bit if you don't have the reflexes of an F1 driver, which I must certainly do not. I'm blaming age and also the booze. That's probably the booze. The learning curve is pretty steep as well, as you need to juggle steering with shooting off your bike cannons and pistols, hoying grenades, taking down shields, all kind of shenanigans. But once it all clicks, you will feel like the ultimate badass carving a path through swaths of enemies and beating seven shades out of the obligatory tough as nails bosses at the end of each level. And for more fast and frantic MetaQuest 3 action, we'll definitely have a gander at Pistol Whip. This is basically an on-rail shooter where your sole purpose is to pick off every bugger what pops up. Each level is set to a different song and you get bonus points for plugging your fours in time to the beat, so it's kind of like an ultra-violent version of Just Dance. The best thing about Pistol Whip is it makes you feel like a proper badass, even if you're just a bald and middle-aged dickhead poncing about in his living room. Chalk up another win to virtual reality over actual reality. And sure, the campaign's plot is about as meaty as a vegan sausage roll, but you'll have so much fun bopping and blasting that you will not even care. And the core game is regularly updated with fresh levels, so there's always a reason to return. Those funky digital style visuals kind of reminded me of Super Hot, and they help to keep this game kid friendly because when you blast someone to bits, you're not actually smearing their kidneys across the nearest wall. There's not a drop of blood in the entire game. And speaking of super hot, hey, that's another game you should definitely play on the MetaQuest 3. The hook here is that enemies move only when you do, so at any time you can freeze and plan out your next move. Should I grab this guy's gun and blast him in the face with it, or maybe just take him down with a well-aimed pull ball to the nads? Heads up though, you will need a good bit of free space to play this one, as you actually have to move around the room, ducking and dodging, and uppercutting some dude's junk. And last up for the action games, I'm a big fan of Robo Recall, a fun and fast-paced arcade title that has you blasting and slapping rogue robots into tiny metal chunks. It's simple but highly addictive carnage and definitely an essential purchase for the MetaQuest 3. And if you're well up for adorable platform type shenanigans, well definitely check out Lucky's Tale. This puts you in control of the titular big-eyed fox thing as he leaps around several colourful environments, murdering all of the local wildlife and generally being a wee furry nuisance, just like real foxes then. There's again not much of a story here, something about your pig getting swiped by a bug-eyed tentacle thing, but it really doesn't matter. What's important is that the platforming is an absolute joy, as long as you can handle some occasionally tricky, well-timed 3D jumps. That difficulty level is just about challenging enough for adults to enjoy, helped along by the added time trials and coin collection challenges, but younger gamers should also be able to make it all the way through without much trouble. And likewise, VR platforming fans should definitely check out the Moss games. These star an adorable wee mousy as she runs around lushly detailed environments, twatting robo bugs with her tiny sword. Gameplay mostly involves tinkering with each mini-level to open up the exit, which you'll do by directly guiding Quill the mouse around using the left thumbstick, as well as grabbing and yanking things with your own disembodied hands. It's a rather intuitive setup, albeit one with occasionally mildly irritating platformy moments. Every so often you'll find yourself battling a bunch of bugs with your sword, which helps to break up the puzzle and shenanigans and inject a wee bit of excitement. That difficulty level is again low, but Moss is still great fun, and the sequel, Book 2, is a direct continuation of the story. So if you crave more of the same, well, fill your boots. And if you're after an immersive and gorgeous sim that'll really test your mental faculties, well, one of my favourites on MetaQuest 3 is Red Matter. This sci-fi adventure has you exploring a spookily deserted space base, figuring out environmental puzzles while also figuring out what the ruddy heck actually happens here. You'll be pulling levers, tweaking knobs and fiddling with machinery to progress deeper into the base's bowels, helped along by an incredibly useful scanner which can translate Russian text, 
and also tell you what stuff is before you muck around with it. The second red matter is a direct continuation of the story and basically more of the same. You got gorgeous graphics, impressive interactivity and a thick ominous atmosphere. And on the MetaQuest 3 you will enjoy proper 4K textures, dynamic shadows and lots of other visual upgrades that will make you go, ooh that's rather pretty. An adventure game and fans should also get a kick out of A Fisherman's Tale. In this one you're a wooden puppet who lives in a lighthouse, naturally, who spends his spare time working on a small wooden replica of the homestead. But one day when you lift the roof off, well you discover a tiny version of yourself inside that model. And not just that, but your own home's roof appears to have completely vanished and now an enormous you is looming overhead. Thus begins an absolute mind f of an adventure which I'm not sure I can accurately describe here but basically involves you solving various environmental puzzles by passing objects between your various different sized selves. It's a work of pure genius and getting through each chapter will take some proper lateral thinking as well as some thorough exploration and perhaps a healthy dose of illicit substances. Factor in the emotional story and some slick presentation and this is one of my favourite titles for MetaQuest 3. And good news for fans because a sequel is also available and it's another cracker. This time you find yourself marooned on a desert island with the ability to swap your wooden hands for various other implements and also, somewhat amusingly, launch your head across the room. Those puzzles once again get quite trippy so brace yourself for some serious thinking outside of the box. Now one of the most addictive games that I've played on the MetaQuest 3, one which I return to religiously, is Walkabout Mini Golf and it is exactly what you would expect it to be. Several courses of crazy golfing shenanigans to suit players of all skill types and age. Holes range from your usual fare with rocks and tunnels to absolutely batch mental efforts that you'll never actually see on a real life course, taking full advantage of those VR escapades. There's a hardcore version of each course to tackle once you're confident, you got missing balls to find dotted all over the place, and basically hours of absolute joy thanks to the realistic physics and stellar design work. And the developers are constantly adding bonus courses as well so there's no excuse to ever stop playing. Now another VR mind bender is The Last Clockwinder which sees you striving to save an ancient clockwork tree with the help of magical robot cloning gloves. And yes, I'm aware that that sentence makes me sound like I'm on all of the drugs, but let me explain. What you'll essentially be doing is harvesting fruit. Lots of fruit. But you can't do this single-handed. Instead, just push a button on your controller and record yourself performing an action like plucking a bit of fruit and tossing it merrily into a collection barrel. And push that button again and poof, up pops a robot slave who will happily repeat that action over and over. At first, you'll be trying to set up the most efficient robo-labs possible, but as you unlock more rooms with more complex requirements, you'll find that these robots really must work together with perfect timing to get any kind of results. Thankfully you can quickly and easily scrap any robots that went a bit wrong with the push of another button and believe me you'll be doing that hundreds and hundreds of times. And there is a sweet wee story which is gradually revealed via conveniently scattered tape recorders, the kind of that game developers just can't get enough of. Now, if like me, you really can't be asked with any of that real life gym shenanigans, well, no worries. There's relief to be had in Fit XR, a proper virtual workout. Fresh workouts are added constantly to Fit XR, including boxing sessions, hit shenanigans, dancing, all kinds of stuff to work off last night's boozy overindulgences. But you will need to pay a monthly subscription to get involved. If you'd rather not pay a monthly sub, then I also highly recommend Les Mills Body Combat. A one-off fee grants you access to dozens of intense workouts that really engage every muscle in your body. And by engage, I mean absolutely punish it until you're a sweaty, flabby puddle of human flesh writhing on the floor. Now, when I first reviewed the MetaQuest 3 helmet, I felt that the controller tracking wasn't quite good enough to keep up with some of the more intense Les Mills workouts. Thankfully, that seems to have been sorted in a subsequent update, so now you can do those rapid uppercuts without seeing your hands disconcertingly fly across the room. And on the Quest 3, you can play with the fresh new mixed reality mode as well if you want to swap all of those lush virtual environments for your actual living room. That's probably a good plan if you occasionally have random family members wandering by so you don't accidentally uppercut your gran. I also have to give big love to Synth Riders, an excellent rhythm game that has you fist pumping all over the place to punch coloured balls before they smack you right in the mug. There's a great selection of tunes to bop along to. 
And on the MetaQuest 3, you'll once again enjoy a mixed reality mode as well as a ton of performance and gameplay upgrades. I've also got a big up Smash Drums, which is a fantastic way of relieving some of that pent up stress. And once again, it looks better and plays better on MetaQuest 3. And last up, I heartily recommend Samba de Amigo, which has you shaking your maracas in time to a bunch of bangers, including Bon Jovi, Culture Club, Marshmallow, even OK Go. With some fun mini games breaking up the action to max out your score and some gorgeously vibrant cartoon graphics, there's nothing not to love here, apart from possibly the Jonas Brothers. And that right there, my lovelies, is my pick of the very best MetaQuest 3 single player games you can play right now in 2024. But did I miss off your own personal pick, your own favourite MetaQuest 3 games? Let me know what a massive clagnut I am down in the comments below and close in as to what your picks would be. Please do put subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers!